Welcome everyone to part three in this series on normalization in ServiceNow. In the previous video, we looked at normalization data services, which is a way in which we can normalize company names only through a content repository provided by ServiceNow, but that we can also maintain. In this video, we're going to look at field normalization, which is a way in which we can normalize essentially any field value in the platform, not just company names. And as we'll see, it works quite a bit differently than normalization data services. If we look at the documentation, it says that field normalization includes normalization and transformation, which are two different ways to alter field values for increased data integrity and reduced duplication. So what does this mean? Well, normalization, as we've already discussed, is normalizing field values to some standard values. So for example, company names, if we found an instance of ServiceNow recorded as Service-Now, we could normalize that value to ServiceNow, one word, capital S and capital N. We often use this in the CMDB if we want to normalize product names, company names, manufacturer names. But it also includes data transformation. So with this feature, we can actually create rules to transform or change data according to these rules. So for example, if we want to round up or down uh, values for, for RAM or hard disk space to a nearest integer or some other value, we could do that. If we wanted to make email addresses or lowercase, we could use this feature to do that as well. So let's have a look at how to set this up and do some demonstrations and test this out. The first thing that we will need to do here is to install the plugin for field normalization. So let's go ahead and install that and load some demo data as well, which is often useful to learn how this feature works or how any feature uh, that is installed for a plugin works. So we'll just activate that, let that run its course. And once it's installed, we'll close that off and we'll go to the field normalization application. Now, there's quite a few modules in here. We're not gonna go through each one here, but the main two modules here are normalizations and transformations. So those two features that we were just discussing. So if we go to the normalizations module first, we can see we've got some demo records here already. And the first one being for the company name, which is one of the main use cases for this feature. So if we open this one up, I've actually made some changes um, before I made this recording uh, to this record. So we're not actually gonna use this for demonstration purposes in this video. Instead, we're going to start creating a new configuration from scratch. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a normalization configuration for a table that I've got here that lists various airports, including Brisbane and Sydney Airport. Now, there's actually only two airports recorded in this list here, but they are recorded in different ways. So with Brisbane, I've got it recorded as Brisbane, Brisbane Airport, Brisbane City Airport, Brisbane International Airport, and the second last entry down the bottom there is the ICAO code for Brisbane, which is YBBN. Now, if we wanna have our processes all referencing the same value, reports or referencing the same value, we need to normalize these values. I'm gonna go back to my normalizations table here and create a new entry, give it a name, airports or airport names. I specify the table. Now, because I'm working in a scoped application here, I only can see, I can only see one table here, which is my normalization demo table. And the field that is of interest to us that we want to normalize is the one that we're just looking at, which is called airport. Now, what we can also do here is to normalize the query. And we'll take a look at this a little bit later. So basically, this means that we can also use the variance in our queries for this field value so that they actually query the normalized value instead of the variance. Uh, the third setting here on the right is coalesce each normal, which means if we want to actually only have one record um, because this is the coalesce value, so the unique key for the record in this table, um, we can do that here as well. But I'm going to leave that unselected. If we want to, we can also specify a raw field so that when we do normalize values, the original value will be recorded in this raw field field. 
So I've got one set up here already, uh, which is called airport and then in brackets original. So just for demonstration purposes, so, so it's clear what the normal value or what the original value was. So we'll go ahead and save that. Now, once we do that, we can see we've got some related lists here. Uh, the second one here is pending values. So what's actually occurred, there is a data job that has been started and it looks like it's finished already because we only had uh, 10 values to collect. It's gonna actually scan that table, that field and bring all values for that field, for the records that we currently have and populate this list here. So we know what values we need to either specify a normal value for or else a variant, okay? If we go to the data jobs list here, we can see that this job has been started. So this starts automatically and scans that table, scans that field and brings those values in to the pending values list. Uh, but if I go ahead and just refresh this list, we can see that it's already been completed. And we kind of knew that already by the fact that we've got 10 pending values in that list, which correlates to the 10 records I've got in that table at the moment. Okay, so if I go to the normal values related list here now, this is what we need to do next. We need to specify a normal value or values. So I'm just going to use Brisbane uh, as the example here. So Brisbane Airport should be the normal value. So I'll go ahead and populate this here, Brisbane Airport. Now, there are actually different ways we can specify normal values as well as variants here. I'm doing it manually. So I'm basically assuming that I have a record or should have a record at the moment because I've got these pending values called Brisbane Airport. So if I click ahead and save that here, we can see that the list of pending values now only contains nine. We did have 10 actually. So there was actually a value, a record in the table with the value for airport as Brisbane Airport. And that's what I specified as the normal value. So now we're kind of deducting that from that list of pending values because now we've specified one of those values as a normal value. Okay, so now the next thing to do is to specify aliases or variants to this normal value. So again, there's different ways we can do this. Uh, I could do it manually. I could just know what variants we currently have or what we expect uh, to be getting and just put them in this list here. So I can go ahead here and click on new and just put in here Brisbane, okay, and submit that. Now, again, I had a record uh, in the table where the airport was just called Brisbane. So therefore, the list of pending values now is reduced to eight records now. So an easy way to do this is actually under the related links, just to click on aliases here. So that will actually display the list of pending values. And then you can just select, okay, these other values that we currently have in the table, um, we want to have them or specify them as variants. So I'll do that. So I'll just go ahead and select uh, Brisbane City Airport and add this to the list. Okay, and just save that. So now we've got two aliases or two variants. Okay, if we go to our pending values, we've got seven now. So we've got 10 records, one is a normal value, and we've got two variants. So now we only have seven. Okay, <laughs> and the data jobs, we've got two, which correspond to the two aliases we have. Now we'll talk about these data jobs uh, in a moment. Uh, but they will basically be used to normalize existing records that we have in this table. Okay, not for new records, only for existing ones. Okay, so it's kind of like a one off job that you may want to uh, run at the start just to make sure that after you set this up, that the values in the table are all normalized. Okay. Because at the moment, if I go ahead and create a new record, this is applicable, this configuration is now live, uh, which we'll see shortly. So let's go back to our aliases. I'm actually going to add one more here, the YBBN one, that code. Save that. 
then come back. We've only got six pending values now. Now, we still have Brisbane International Airport as a pending value, and I do want to include that as a variant as well, but the way I'm going to do it is a little bit differently. So I'm not going to explicitly or manually define an alias. Instead, what I will do is set up a rule. So if you have variants that you know always contain a certain value, uh, then you can define that as a rule, and that will just pick up uh, any records that are created uh, automatically. So here I'll create a new rule. Give it a name, Brisbane rule, and then just specify you know, what condition. And now it's a little bit tricky to see here because it's kind of squeezed into one column on the left-hand side here. But I'm going to say where the airport contains uh, the word Brisbane. Okay. And I'm going to make it case insensitive. Okay, so it could be small b, capital B, it doesn't matter. Okay. I'm also going to select make alias. Now, if we just look at the documentation for this setting, it says if this checkbox is selected and the rule evaluates to true, the rule makes an alias automatically from a pending value. Okay, that's kind of obvious. But the significance of this is that uh, when you want to clean up data that or normalize data that you currently have in your table, then you should make an alias. So the rule will actually um, be live and will normalize this value uh, straight away for new records that are created. But if you want to normalize existing values that you have, then you should create an alias because when you create an alias, you automatically or the system will automatically create a corresponding data job to clean up those existing records, as we already saw with uh, some of the aliases that we've already created. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save that. Now, once I do that, this rule is active. Um, but what I want to do now is actually apply this rule so that it applies to the or picks up that pending value uh, that I currently have um, in the table. So the way I do that is just to select that rule and then come to my menu here and then go to apply to pending values. At the moment you can see I've got six pending values remaining. So once I select that, the page will refresh and now my pending values is now five, one less. And the number of aliases is actually one more. It's four now. If I go to aliases, I can see here I've got Brisbane International Airport there. Okay, so this configuration, as I mentioned, is live now. So if we actually go to our table and create a new record, if I just put in here Brisbane, save it, we can see the normalized value Brisbane Airport. And the original value is now recorded in that raw field, that airport original field. Okay, if we do another example here and put in the airport code YBBN, save that, same thing happens. It's normalized to Brisbane Airport. One more example, Brisbane City International Airport. Now, we don't have a record for that yet. Okay, we actually don't have uh, an alias for that. However, because we have a rule, that means that it says... If any value contains the word Brisbane, then we are going to normalize that value, which means if I save that record, it's normalized to Brisbane Airport. Okay. So if we come back to our table now, we've got some values that have been normalized, but still our original records that are here have not yet been normalized. Okay. And this is where these data jobs come into play. So the configuration that we've set up now is live for new records that we create, but for existing records, we need to run those data jobs. So if I come back to my configuration here and just go to the data jobs tab and refresh this list, we've actually got a uh, fourth one here now, uh, a data job, because it's picked up that alias. So that rule that we've specified, uh, we saw that we had uh, activated that option to create an alias. Uh, whenever we find like a corresponding match uh, for that rule. So it's created an alias already for Brisbane City International Airport. Okay, so what we need to do is actually to run these data jobs. But if I select them and come to my menu here, we can see that the start 
option here is grayed out. And that's because the configuration yet is still in test mode. So we need to change that to active. So the configuration is already active for new records, but not we're not normalizing or haven't yet normalized existing values. So we need to change the mode to active, save that record. And now if we come down to our data jobs here, we've got uh, a new data job um, for normalizing airports. And so if I select that now and then click on start, what that will do is actually create a data job for Brisbane International Airport. That was one of the original records that we had there. We didn't have an alias for it yet. Uh, we had a rule, but we didn't yet have an alias. But now we've run that data job, so the system has created well, an, a data job specifically for that record, if that makes sense. So now we can come here and go to these data jobs and start them. Okay, so these data jobs are specifically directed at aliases that we see here, and it's going to normalize these values. Okay, it'll only take a moment to do. So if we go ahead and refresh here, you can see it's been completed. And now if we come back to our table and then just refresh this list, all the remaining values, the original values, the original records that we had are now normalized. Now, one of the great things about this feature is that it can normalize queries as well or use these variants that we've got now in the queries, okay? It will understand that, okay, the original values that we had, if we use those original values in a query, the system will know that those variants actually point to a normalized value and therefore will kind of make the connection in the query. So now if I were to search here for all records or airport codes, YBBN, even though we don't have any field values for that, for airport, because it's a normalized value, because um, we've got this variant defined, we get not just records where the original value was YBBN, but all records that are Brisbane Airport, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what variant it is, they should all point to one uniform value, okay? And that's exactly what we expect here, okay? We want to see all records where the airport is Brisbane. However, that's been recorded, and that's what we show up here. So this is a really nice feature in normalization, in field normalization, that we can do this. Uh, if I were to change the operator to an asterisk, so contains YBBN, uh, then, then that actually won't work. Uh, but if we take another example, equals to Brisbane, then it will work just fine. So that's how we can go ahead and normalize data using the field normalization application in ServiceNow. In the next video, we're going to have a look at the second half of this application, which is to transform data. So if we want to manipulate and change data in any way, we can do that as well.